Good evening everybody, MG here, MG Covers, coming to you live with a brand new handicapping video. Very excited about this. We're going to talk about some college football. Title of this video is a simple sports betting stat model for college football. Those of you that have watched me for a long time know that there's two parts to handicapping. You have the objective part of handicapping and the subjective part of handicapping. you got to have two parts. Tonight we're going to deal with the... Uh, objective part, uh, creating a stat model for college football. We're going to show you a very simple stat model. I've been getting a lot of questions uh, from people, uh, Instagram, um, emails, even on YouTube about creating a stat model. The best stat models for sports betting are very simple. Okay. Um, and just to give an example for baseball, don't try to complicate it. There's two parts of baseball, right? There's hitting and there's pitching. So you got to figure out a way to use those come up with a stat model that involves those two stats uh, hockey season is going on right now i love my stat model it's very good for hockey uh, hockey is basically three parts you have eat what i call even goal differential how well your team performs against the other team uh, power play and penalty kill that's pretty much it now uh, in football you can there's a lot of different things you can look at um, stat wise and creating an effective stat model. I'm going to show you just one simple stat model that's very effective uh, for college football. So let's dive right into it. Uh, just so you know, I'm on the NCAA, it's literally NCAA.org website if you want to go there. Um, it's actually a really good site. Um, let's click on individual and team statistics. And some of you may watch my NFL videos. If you haven't, those are excellent videos on capping the NFL. There's parts one, two, and three on the YouTube channel. And we all know this. If you don't know this, I'm going to go ahead and tell you this. Uh, teams that run the football that are very uh, effective at rushing the football in a game have a high percentage chance of winning. So this stat model is built around that. It's very simple. So all I did was I go to rushing offense, uh, click uh, – Click that and let's go here to this. Okay. So this is NCAA rankings and you can see here, these are the teams over here on the left and over here on the right, this is yards per game. This is cumulative. So this averages out all of their games from the beginning of the season until now. And you can see Navy is first in rushing yards per game, averaging 345 yards per game. And let's look at like the top five. You have Wyoming there at 236. Awesome. Uh, Clemson, uh, 247. And if you look right here where it says win-loss record, you can see Navy's 5-1. and one. Uh, Ohio State, 7-0. and oh. uh, You have Boston College there at 4-3. and three. Oklahoma, 7-0. and oh. So most of these teams that are running the ball, averaging a lot of yards per game, do very well, win, win a lot of games. Conversely, let's sort of flip this. If you look over here, yards per game, these are teams that do not rush the ball very well, averaging anywhere from 49 yards a game to 105 yards a game. And we look over here, look at their record. Akron, 0-7. Purdue, 2-5. San Jose State, 3-4. Old Dominion, 1-6. Do have a winning record there, Washington State. Uh, New Mexico State, 0-7. So rushing the football is is a very good predictive is very predictive of success in winning football games. And you hear coaches, it's such a cliche thing. We got to, we got to rush the football, but it's true. And you can build a stat model around that, which I'm going to show you here now. So let's go back to the good teams here. Okay. So we have Navy air force, uh, Tulane, Oklahoma. So what I did was let's look at this spreadsheet here. And this is absolutely mind blowing mind-blowing to see this for the first time if you haven't already realize this this is uh all i did was i just copy and pasted i think i've got the top 15 teams here and you can see the teams here their conference uh, along with rushing yards per game the amount of rushing yards are averaging per game navy 345 and you have appalachian state at 232 and over here because again it's not just about win loss in college football it's about uh, are they covering the spread this over here on the left is against the spread wins, and this is against the spread losses. Uh, you can see Navy's five and one, Ohio State six and one, uh, Oklahoma five and two. And what I've done is the teams that have a losing record, 
I actually highlighted those in red. So just using that statistic alone, one, let's count this up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So there's 18 teams. Out of 18 of the top rushing teams in college football, there's only four teams that have a, a losing record with just one stat uh, against the spread. So that's pretty, pretty cool. And if you add all that up, that's 79 wins, 41 losses. I put ATL up here, y'all. This should say uh, – well, I think I can correct it. Can I correct it on the screen? I should be able to, right? ATL. Let me fix that. Can I correct that? Yeah, I can. should say against the – whoops. Should say against the against the against the spread losses. Okay, so seventy nine wins, forty one losses. That average that comes out to I factor in the juice as well. So that's thirty three units year to date. Now, understanding stats, this is all of these these numbers you see here on the left. That is cumulative, which means. When these teams opened up and played the very first game of the season, we had none of these stats, right? So it's it's not like you'll be able to – you would have this model the very first game of the season. So it would take probably at least three games to have some statistical data that would be somewhat predictive. And now, you know, teams have played, you know, six, seven games. So it's – you have a lot of uh, data built into the stat model. So – my point is, you, there's no way you could actually be – well, you could be 79 and 41, but it's not realistic because, again, you don't have this model the very first game of the season. So I just want to make that clear. However, you can use this model moving forward to predict games uh, in the future. So what we're going to do is let's just take a look at a few of these games here. You got – um, like I'm actually going to look at – um. Let's look at Navy here. So, Navy, uh, best team in college football, rushing the ball. So, let's go up here and let's go to – and the site that I'm on now, this is uh, covers.com. I'm not affiliated with covers.com. Um, however, it is a very good site for for stats. Um, what's the team we're looking at? Navy here. Yeah, so we type in Navy and it pulls up. Okay, so we got Navy and Tulane. All right. Um, Tulane is five and two overall, five and two against the spread. So pretty good covering team. Navy five and one, five and one against the spread. And it looks like the line is Navy minus three and a half. Now we scroll all the way down here. This is another reason why I like covers. You get some really cool stats here. So it says this is what you really want to look at here as far as rushing yards. Just sticking with that rushing handicapping uh, philosophy. So you got Tulane's offense is averaging 267 yards, which is the reason they're covering the spread. Averaging 267 yards. However, look at Navy's defense. They're holding opponents to only 97 yards rushing. So the ideal uh, team you're looking for is teams that rush the ball really well but also play great defense. And it's no mystery. These, this is what these teams are doing. It's the same deal with uh, Gus Malzahn at Auburn. They want to be able to run the ball. And they want to play great defense. Navy's the same way. So it, these stats I'm showing you, the coaches actually use this to win football games. That's our actual philosophy. Hey, we're going to run the ball. We're going to play great defense. And if you look over here, Navy's offense is averaging 345 yards. Tulane's defense has given up 142 yards. So it's safe to say that Navy will be effective in, in running the ball. And if you've watched my NFL videos, what happens if you just sort of um, – play out the game in your mind, if a team is able to run the ball, control the line of scrimmage, what happens is they they win time of possession. And if they win time of possession, that means they have the ball longer than the opponent, which means they have more scoring opportunities than, the, than their opponent, therefore increasing their chances of winning the game and covering the spread. So that's how all that works. So, again, this would probably be a pretty good play – uh, to play Navy. Again, there's other things that I'm going to look at. I just kind of want to focus on the stat model and give you s some insight to how I would sort of handicap this game. All right, so let's look at another one over here. And you can actually see Tulane's in there as well. Um, and one thing I want to show you, this is pretty neat. So let's look at uh, Army. So Army 
is uh, averaging 254 yards per game. But notice they have a losing record against the spread. So I want to show you something very cool here. So let's pull up Army. Army. There's Army. Okay. And they're favored against San Jose State. Minus nine. And we look all the way down and again. Navy. Army runs the ball well, very well, but they haven't been covering against the spread, and I'm going to show you why here. So you look here, San Jose State's offense only averaging 85 yards rushing, but look at what Army's defense has given up. They're giving up 159 yards um, rushing. And remember when I showed you uh, Navy was holding their opponents to under 100 yards rushing. So – so one of the reasons why Army is probably probably has a losing record against the spread is that right there, um, not a good defense. Okay, but however, in this game, this is a pretty good matchup because San Jose State struggles to run the ball, and of course Army runs the ball really well. So what's our line here? Army minus nine and a half. So that would probably be a decent play. Uh, Laying the, uh, laying the points there in that game. So, again, when you're looking at all these teams, I'm not going to go through every single team here, but that, um, again, if a team can run the ball and they play good defense, chances are that team's going to cover. Uh, same deal, Clemson's good defense. Auburn has a good defense. I want to go down here and look at Wisconsin. Wisconsin 5-2. and two. Of course, they um, laid an egg this, this past weekend. But just to kind of give you some insight into that game and that line specifically, let's type in Wisconsin. So Wisconsin, Ohio State. Now, had Wisconsin not lost to Illinois, this line would probably be a lot tighter than it is. Um, but as it stands, you have look over here on the left, Ohio State minus fourteen. So Wisconsin getting fourteen points. And if you look at the stats here, Wisconsin offense averaging 236 yards rushing, Ohio State's defense uh, averaging giving up 93 yards rushing yards. And look over here, Wisconsin defense only allowing 60 yards of rushing and averaging 287 yards. So that's definitely leaning in the direction of uh, Wisconsin, especially getting 14 points. And, and another thing I, I do when you look at the – when you're looking at lines, this is just a quick handicap and tip. So here's one thing I do. So Wisconsin, I want to make sure – Ohio State is um, the favorite minus 14 and a half. So I go over here and look and see if Ohio State is regularly covering 14 and a half. Uh, my bad. Sorry about that, guys. All right, so they definitely covered 14 and a half against Northwestern, Michigan State, Nebraska, Miami of Ohio, um, is it Indiana, uh, Cincinnati, FAU. Did they cover? Yep. So they definitely can cover 14. So if you're playing a favorite, always do that in your handicapping, whether it's um, specifically in college football, because NFL, you don't see that. You don't see big spreads, big spreads like this in the NFL, but in college football, you will, you'll see, you know, teams 20. So if a team is a favorite minus 26, go look at the box scores and see if they're regularly covering that 26. That's important because if they're not, might be hesitant to play. But in this situation, uh, as far as Ohio State goes, they're definitely covering that 14. So that would be a plus towards Ohio State. However, if you go over here and look at Wisconsin, you look at the only game they lost was the Illinois game. Um, everybody else, they've uh, pretty much uh, dominated. Northwestern, 24-15. That was a little bit closer game. Michigan, 35-14. Uh, blew out Michigan State, 38-0. to So, a lot that has – this line really had – Wisconsin won that game would be a lot tighter. Maybe like, you know, minus seven, something like that. So, definitely leaning towards uh, Wisconsin this one. So anyway, so that's a very simple uh, stat model that you can use. It's very effective. And again, it's just taking one stat, which is rushing yards per game, 
and just using that to handicap college football. And again, you could you could definitely like if you came over here like this spreadsheet here if you wanted to uh, dive into this deeper. Like if you did uh, rushing yards on defense, you could put this over here, and that would probably if you had like a criteria like teams giving up less than 150. 50 yards rushing per game that would probably take out army and would increase this over here even even more um looks like georgia's three and four probably because they had some huge huge spreads so anyway um that's it really that's a that's a simple uh stat model that you can use for college football and again if you're wanting to create a model again just remember keep it very very simple and then you want to test it so if you have an idea you say well hey what about uh passing yards well, you could test it. Um, go look at teams that have um, maybe it's they 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 pass for over four hundred yards, but they play great defense. Okay, and just build it and get a list of teams like I did here, and then check their against the uh, against the spread wins versus against the spread losses, and and see if it works. So a lot of experimenting, a lot of digging around with stats, a lot of playing, and hopefully you can come up with something. So anyway, hopefully you guys like that. Uh, before we go, don't forget, uh, if you would like to subscribe to my service, mgcovers.com, you can get all my picks for all sports, $49.95 a month. If you would like to, we got a coaching program that we're going to launch. Uh, super, super excited about this. Don't have all the details, but it's $29.95 a month. You don't get any plays with that, but you get access to all of my power rankings, um, you also get personal coaching for me, which means you can DM me, you can email me anytime. And we're also going to have premium content that we're going to put up uh, in video form uh, once a week. Uh, and you'll have access to that. Scroll down here to purchase six month membership. This was real popular. Um, so I left it on the site. I was just, I was going to, this sale was going to end uh, Sunday, but I want, I want to go ahead and extend this because so many people took advantage of this. For $199 for six months, you get all of my plays for six months for all sports, all power rankings uh, for $199. It's a really good deal. So if you average that out, instead of paying $49.95 a month, you pay $199 up front, and that will save you $100. So very good deal there. So we'll leave that as is. And that's it, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you do, like this video, subscribe to the channel, add me on Instagram and Twitter. The screen name is MG Covers, covers spelled with a Z. All right. Hope everybody has a winning week and we'll talk to you guys soon. Peace.